and welcome to day three of the um, physics question extravaganza. So what we've got here is this is an electricity question and it's focusing on a bit of internal resistance and a bit of IV characteristics. OK, so I've got here is I've got a current voltage. So I've got one of the things I'm, I'm going to show you uh, how I deal with these kind of questions. So I've got a current voltage graph for a lamp. OK, so these things are important. So it's a current voltage of a lamp used in a car. So when I see a graph with current voltage, one of the things, even before I even read the question, is I actually look and go, OK, so I've got current and voltage. So Ohm's law, of course, is V equals IR. And I go, OK, so what's on what axis here? So I go, well, that's on the Y axis and that's on the X here. And that's R. So V over I equals R. So that's I've got X over Y. So, of course, in this case, here, that there, they remember the gradient is the change in y over the change in x. So of course that's going to be one, uh, which in this case would be one over r. So I'm identifying very quickly in my head that, okay, I know what the gradient of this graph is representing its resistance, what's well, one over the resistance in this one, okay? So what's actually happening here is that the great, the so resistance is one over the gradient Okay, so what's actually happening in here is as the gradient's getting shallower, the resistance is increasing. So in this case, the resistance is increasing. So I'm just basically in my head preparing myself to deal with something to do with resistance, and especially with IV characteristics, okay, because this is IV characteristic. It normally wants to talk about the resistance of the graph, okay? So I've got uh, the positive side here, and question one is draw on figure one what would happen if the connections are supplied were reversed so this is not a diode it allows current to flow both ways um, all it will be is that it's in the opposite direction so at 12 i'll have 2.5 here and i kind of just like eyeball points from this so about 2.4 there i get one so again 2.4 i get sort of one here and basically you are just mirroring this uh thing here so there's another point here so when it is 6.1 it's two or the first one here and what i'm trying to do is i'm just trying to eyeball exactly the same shape so at um six it is oh, i've already done that one so, six, one, one. so let's do four at four it is one two three four so at four it is one, two, th one, two, three, four. So again, what I'm trying to do is eyeball what's going on. And then of course you draw it in. It should be a straight line with a bit of a curve. It's quite hard to sort of draw it upside down, but there we go. So this is actually quite nice. It's, um, if you'd actually look at the mark scheme for this, it says, if I go right to the top, it says the correct general shape and accurate plotting within half a graph. So like, it's very hard to do on a tablet, of course, but you would get one mark, of course, for the shape, which is the opposite curve. OK, and another mark for the plotting. So this is me mirroring the plotting. OK, and I think I did OK with that one. OK, but it's much easier when you've got a piece of paper. OK, you can turn it upside down. The graph can be turned upside down. Really be careful with these, though, because these these because they're so tiny, students sometimes miss them. So always double check. If you see a point here, that means there is a question here. OK. So lamps are marked with working, working voltage and power used in this voltage. For example, uh, a torch maybe have 2.5 volts and 0.3, okay? Um, deduce the marking on the lamp for this headlight. Well, this is interesting because it says, this is where this information of up to its working voltage. So what it's saying here is that this here, this 12 volts of that is its working um, voltage. Okay, so question asks, uh, labels are here, so, what is its uh, for juice to, to juice the marking of the headlight for this one? So it's a working voltage. So it goes up to its working voltage. So that in this case was 12 volts. Okay. And it wants power. So remember, power equals IV. So it wants the power at that working voltage. So of course, I've got my voltage working current is 12. And if you look at the graph here, my working current is 2.5 amps. And that equals 30 watts. So that's 30 there. And that's a mark for the voltage and a mark for that there to get two marks. Okay. So it's one of those things that it is all really important that when you're looking for things, if they're mentioning keywords like working voltage over and over again, have a look, see if that, that weird term has come up before, and maybe that'll give you a bit of a hint. 
Okay, determine the resistance of the lamp when the potential difference across is half the working voltage. Okay, so of course, V equals IR, half the working voltage is six volts. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check up here because this is not an easy sort of well, if I half the voltage, I half the current. It's not that kind of curve. So, you go back and have a look at the data. So, when I am six volts, my current is um, 1.9. Okay times by R, so six divided by 1.9 equals my resistance, grabbing my calculator, and that is 3.2 ohms. Okay, so that is 3.2 ohms there, check my mark scheme. So they go 3.2 ohms there. Okay, so where is it? There it is. So this one, explain without further calculation how the resistance of the lamps varies as the across the voltage and trying to go from zero to its working voltage. So this is actually where my whole thing at the start is really important. So it explains how the voltage, how the resistance of the lamp. So actually, when you're talking about a graph, normally an IV characteristic graph up here, they normally want you to comment on the resistance. So I did mention what's happening here. The gradient is becoming less steep. And I've worked out the resistance, of course, is one over the gradient. So if the gradient is becoming less steep, that means the resistance is increasing, okay? So it says here, explain. So explain what happens. So um, it should really be, in my opinion, state and explain, because the first thing before I even start is like telling me explain without further calculation. So it wants you to wordly explain this, how the resistance of the lamp varies. So how the resistance of the lamp, is three marks, so how the resistance of the lamp varies is that it increases. And as I said before, is with explain questions, you should have been, you should have in your mind said the word because. So explain without further calculation how the resistance of the variant varies, so it increases, and as the voltage increases from there, I guess, so it increases because. What happens, of course, is that the temperature, this is all for the, um, IV catches, the temperature increases, Okay, which means there are more collisions. So there are more collisions. Um, the temperature increases, which means the, vib the lattice vibrates. Okay, which means there are more collisions and therefore a higher resistance. There we go. So I've how you should read this question really should be a state and explain. So it's far okay how the resistance of the lamp varies. So I've said it increases because the temperature increases, which means the lattice vibrates, which means there are more collisions and therefore a higher resistance. We go to the mark scheme, mark for saying resistance increases, mark saying the temperature increases, and mark for saying that there are more collisions. So there we go, three marks, one for actually doing this. So it should easy to be stated and explained, but it's one of those things that you, when you say an explain questions, you, in your head, you should have said, because. Okay, this one here and this one here. Okay, lastly, a bit of a mean question. So a student suggests that this circuit is suitable for collecting the data. In other words, they're saying to collect the data of that experiment, this is a really good Excel it says the lamp working voltage, the maximum resistance on the variable resistor is six ohms, and the internal resistance had the and there is an internal resistor which they haven't labeled on here. So, the first thing to do if I see the word practical circuit or internal resistance, I stick an internal resistor into my device here. Okay, so there's a two ohm resistor, and this one goes from naught to six ohms. Okay, so it's asking you to discuss the limitations. So what are the problems with this uh, thing? So discuss means what you're trying to do is put points across either for or against this circuit. So it wants you to, a really important thing, it shows up to its working voltage. Well, this is a 12 volt battery. The internal resistor is always going to be there which means this internal resistor, no matter what, is going to take some of the potential away. So this lamp, even if this is zero ohms, this lamp will never ever reach its 12 volt working voltage. 
So that is actually one of the limitations. Limitations, of course, means tops and bottoms. So of course, it will, for one mark, one thing, it will never reach its top working voltage because um, internal resistor always removes uh, PD. We'll always do it, no matter what, okay? And let's think about limitations. So if we're talking about the top end, let's think about the bottom as well. So it's one of those things that if you go, okay, the first one's easy because we're talking about the top end. Let's talk about the bottom. So limitations, top and bottom, okay? Discuss the limitations. So even if I had this at full um, resistance, so this is six ohms and that is eight ohms, this is not ever going to receive zero ohms, or zero volts, okay? There's no way I can measure the current through this when there is no very little, okay? So what's going to actually happen here? I'm never going to have to have um, a, a low or a minimum value of, let's scroll down a little, zero volts because the resistances aren't high enough. And what I mean by that is that if you look at this here, my uh, half working voltage, the, so if we go up to my circuit, a half working voltage here, I have got six, uh, I had about six ohms, I think. Yes, uh, 3.2 ohms. The, these resistances aren't big enough to ever put the current so low that I actually get a really low value. So this is important. When you ask about discuss the limitations, they're asking you, will you, limitations means top and bottom. And this is all about working voltage. So this circuit, because it has an internal resistor, will never allow me to have 12 volts to my thing. We're gonna need a battery that's a bigger size. And also these resistors, that variable resistor is way too small. It's not going to give me a low enough current so that I virtually have no voltage over my lamp. So I'm never gonna get the minimum end as well, okay? So there we go, this is, uh, so I've highlighted here a few things. So of course, deduce, okay? Deduce means using the graphs information, okay? Explain, reminding you about this because idea. And what we've done here, discuss. So discuss is sort of looking at pros and cons, looking at things that could be good and could be bad, Okay, and limitations, of course, is when you have to see the word discuss the limitations. Well, what's about the maximum and the minimum value that I can receive? So there we go. That is day three.